had this happened before, you set up a new printer and everything works at first. Your laptop discovers it automatically and then you're ready to go. But then you switch to a different network and no printer anymore. Your laptop can see it. The dynamic discovery process that worked so well before now is useless. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to fix that by using MDNS on Myrotic devices. I'm Wilmer Almazan, and this is the Network Trip. Hello and welcome. So in this video, we are going to be talking about multicast DNS, or simply MDNS. So as network engineers, we are used to the traditional DNS service, where we have a central DNS server, and then we have clients that are requesting information to the server by sending DNS queries. And then the server is going to process the request, and it's going to forward back the response to that specific query. So MDNS is going to work with a different approach. So I would like to mention that MDNS has been introduced in Router OS 7.16 or any upper version. Multicast DNS is a zero configuration networking protocol that is going to be used for one specific purpose, device discovery in our local area networks. For example, if I go with my laptop and I try to add a new printer, and I search for that printer in the local area network, my laptop is going to start sending MDNS messages to try to find that printer in our local area network. This is going to work fine if the printer is connected in the same network. But what happens if we are in a different network? So when our device is sending those DNS queries, it's going to be using a multicast address as the destination. And that is going to be the 224.0.0.251. And those queries will be targeting services that will be ending with .local. If you have a printer, if you have an Apple device, if you have Google, Chromecast, or you have any other device that supports MDNS, that device is going to join the multicast group 2024.00.251. And it's going to have a domain name mapped to that IP, and that domain is going to end with .local. MDNS is commonly used in small networks, in home networks, and environments where dynamic, easy-to-use discovery mechanisms are required. So now let's go to the action. Let's start capturing traffic with Wireshark and let's try to find a printer in our local area network. So in here in Wireshark, I will simply start capturing traffic on the Ethernet interface and I will filter this traffic just to see all the MDNS traffic. And now I will go to the printers in my computer and then I will simply start looking for a printer in my local area network. I don't have any printer connected in this moment, but my computer is going to try to find that printer here. So now I will stop the capture. Uh, so we see a lot of MDNS traffic for multiple services, but I'm now interested on this one, on the IPIP TCP. So I will select this packet, and now we're going to explore the different layers that we're going to see here. So we see that this is running on UDP, and the destination port is 5353. And at the IP layer, we see that the destination IP is 2024.00.251, as we were expecting, because this is the multicast address that is used by MDNS. And additionally, we see here the multicast domain name system information. So if I expand this layer, we see here the queries and we can see that this is uh, basically asking for a device with this domain and we know that this domain is mapped to printers so if i expand this you can see that this is looking for the ipp tcp dot local if i had a printer in my local area network that printer will take the message and will respond back with the ip address and that's how my windows system is able to talk directly to that device. I have included some of the most common services that we're gonna find in our homes or offices. So you can see here for printers, we can see exactly the same domain that we saw in the wire capture. 
So we have some file sharing devices. For example, you are running the network file system. It's going to be using this domain. We have FTP. So basically, those are the different domain names that are well-known domains. And then if I have a Windows system or any other operating system and I'm trying to find devices for that specific category, that query will be sent to that domain. And if that device exists, it's going to respond with the IP address. Now let's go to the action. Let's see how this protocol works and when we're going to need our MyRotic device using MDNS. So let's see this topology. So we have a pretty common network setup for a small office or home office. So we see here an internet connection. We have R1 and then R1 has three different networks. So we have a network for the staff. We have a network for the guests and also we have any other network. So basically three different networks, one is running on Ether2, another one is running on Ether3, and then we have a bridge between the Ether4 and Ether5 where we have the guest network. And additionally, Ether1 is where the ISP is connected. I have multiple Ubuntu devices, so this is going to be in real life, something like printers, it's going to be cameras, it's going to be a lot of different smart devices. But also this can be running on Windows, this can be running on Linux. So for the demonstration purpose, I'm going to be using Ubuntu. MDNS is going to work by default inside the same network. So for example, device 2 and device 3, they are able to exchange MDNS information, queries and responses without the intervention of the router because they are basically in the same network. So let's configure MDNS in those Ubuntu devices and let's see how MDNS works. First of all, we need to enable MDNS in our Ubuntu device. And to do that, basically, we're going to follow three different steps. So the first one is about enabling the host name. And to that, we are simply going to use this command and we are going to modify the Etsy host file, where basically we're going to map the IP address, the local host IP address, to the domain. That is going to be the hostname.local. Uh, then we're going to enable the MDNS service, and that is going to happen in that file, dnsswitch.conf. And finally, we're going to enable the Avahi daemon, that is basically the service that is enabling MDNS in that specific host. I will configure the device number two, uh, just to show you how we're going to enable MDNS. But MDNS is ready on devices 1, 3, and N. To set the hosting, we're going to use sudo. Uh, hotsname uh, ctl and then set dash hotsname and we're gonna pick the name so in this case this is gonna be device 2 and we need the sudo password the next step is gonna be to modify uh, the etsy host file and to that we simply go to sudo nano and then etsy host and then here we're basically going to add a new entry or 127.0.0.1 and this is going to be let's say device 2.local so basically we are mapping the domain that we're going to be used for uh, MDNS and the local host IP so now we can save the changes and the next step is that we need to enable MDNS and to do that we are going to modify another file that is also on the etsy directory and then here this is nsswitch.conf so here we're going to look for this uh, row where we have hosts and then here after dns we are going to add a space and we're going to type mdns4 so basically it's going to be the final output and now we can simply save that file so we have completed two steps and now the next step is simply to restart the abahi daemon and also the network services and to that, we're going to use systemctl restart Abahi daemon. And also, we're going to restart the network manager. So now, this PC is going to be listening on MDNS and it's going to be responding to any query that is going to device2.local. Now, we're going to start capturing the traffic. On this link that is between device 3 and R1, where basically we're going to intercept all the MDNS traffic to see what exactly is happening. At this moment, R1 won't be playing any role related to MDNS, 
because those two interfaces are in a bridge and basically device two and device three are in the same network. So what I'm gonna do is that I will go to uh, PC3, for example. From here, I will simply send a ping to device2.local. So this is gonna send that uh, MDNS query. So we can see that this getting the responses. So now if we go to Wireshark, uh, we can see over here all the MDNS messages, and we're gonna see this that is asking for the device2.local. So this is coming from the IP 4.253, that's the IP on the device 3. So if I go to the MDNS layer, you see this query that basically is looking for device 2.local. And that's asking for a type A record. And then that device that is already listening for the MDNS traffic is going to reply. And now we see that this is coming from the IP 4.254 and it's still going to the multicast address, but now is including an answer and this is telling okay the device 2.local has this specific IP address and this was how this PC got the IP from that device 3. MDNS is working great in that network but what happened if I try to find a device that is in a different network? If I come to that PC, this is PC3 now and I try to ping device one.local, we're gonna see that this won't work. This device is sending the MDNS query, but no one is replying because the device doesn't exist in that network. So the same is gonna happen if I try to contact or discover device n.local. Also, this is not working. This is how we're going to enable MDNS proxy in our MyRotic device. We're gonna go to IP, and DNS, and then here we're gonna find this option. And we're gonna pick the interfaces where we wanna forward the MDNS messages that the router is getting. So basically we're gonna copy those messages out of all of those interfaces. And if we're gonna be using the terminal, we can simply use this option. MDNS-repeat-ifaces equals, and then we're gonna add a list of the interfaces separated by a comma. In our scenario, the interfaces where MDNS proxy will be working are Ether2, Ether3, and the bridge. We won't pick the individual interfaces, so in this case it's going to be the bridge, because this is going to be the master, and Ether4 and Ether5 are simply slaves from that bridge. So now here in R1, and I will simply go to IP, and then DNS, and we see this option, MDNS repeater interfaces, and we're going to select Ether2, and we're gonna select Ether3, and also I'm gonna select the bridge guest. And now I can click OK. And if you are blocking the communication between the networks, you will need a rule explicitly allowing the communication with the intended devices. So at this point, the router is ready. So if I go back to the PC and I repeat this process, if I ping device one, you can see that now we are getting a response. And if I ping device N, also I'm getting the response. We have successfully completed our lab where MDNS is working and allowing the communication between devices by using a domain. And we don't need a central DNS server. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this protocol is used commonly for device discovery, like finding printers, finding smart devices. But now you know how to enable your MyRotic device to allow the discovery process across different networks. I'm Wilmer Almazan, and I hope that this video has been informative for you. Remember to get subscribed to the channel and enable the bell notifications if you wanna receive information about the upcoming videos in the channel.